Okay. So good morning once again. Thank you to all of us who've joined in today, to the online students, to the students here, as well as those who've um, joined us for e-learning. I hope all of you are doing good and well. Okay. All right. Um, we're in week 12 of our, uh, our class today. And a uh, quick recap from anybody. So we did two major sections up until now. So anyone would like to recap what we've done? Just maybe the sections of what we've done. About praying for our children, for our family, going to the altar to pray for them. Yeah. OK. All right. So last week, we spoke about family altar. We spoke about what is the role of um, the church in nurturing the family. We also spoke about uh, family altar and how we can pray, right? So th those were parts of uh, elements in marriage that we looked at. So that was an entire section that we looked at, OK? Today, we're going to um, just focus on, I, I trust I can complete this today, on challenges in marriages. What are the different challenges that come about in marriages? Okay, so I'm on uh, chapter 11, and in your books it's 119, and on the um, uh, on the soft on the hard cop soft copies it's again yeah 119 overcoming life's challenges. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll focus on that today. Um. And I'm sure we all understand that life in itself has challenges. So much more marriages can have challenges. What do you think are some of the challenges that can come about in marriages? Misunderstandings. Misunderstandings. OK. Blaming each other. Blaming each other. OK. Okay. The pressures generally that's involved, both social, uh, financial uh, pressures that are involved. Okay. <clears throat> there can be health issues that come about, right? There can be difficulty in relationships that come. Okay. Yeah. So challenges are common uh, in life, and it is as much common in, um, in marriages also. Okay, and uh, Jesus spoke about that in John 16, 33. So he said, I have told you these things so that in me you have peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good courage for I have overcome the world. So the Lord has warned us about challenges in every area of our lives. But one thing that we can hold on to is the fact that Jesus has overcome the world. So when we are in him, we trust and know that he's the one who has overcome the world. Now, are these challenges um, just particularly for us? It is, it's something that's there for everyone. Life's challenges affect every person, right? It's, it's not something that um, is new. Through generations, through centuries, people have gone through challenges. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that, No temptation has come your way beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. So the, the understanding, or, or we know that others also have faced similar issues when you probably look back at your own families you know the kind of issues and challenges they faced so what we're facing is not new okay so what do challenges how do challenges benefit you how can challenges benefit you what do you think it strengthens your bond okay so challenges can strengthen relationships in itself the bond between people okay 
it helps us learn it helps us learn certain lessons wonderful prince they make us stronger, they make us stronger. it can either make us stronger or it can it can it can make us weaker right it uh, it depends on how we are willing to take it to receive it right anything else okay it helps us change our perspective sometimes it helps us see that <clears throat> you know when you go through challenges is when you really realize that there is something that god's put in your heart to help you go through that that you discover something new about yourself that you will that that you figure out that you know i can i i may, may have thought i wouldn't be able to go through it but god has shown you that that, that he's put something inside of you to to deal with it anything else <clears throat> wonderful it builds our faith right it builds our faith usually it's when our uh, dependent when we are uh, in difficult times is when you know we all turn to god right and that's not a great thing that we turn to god only when there is difficulties but that's when our faith and our our relationship with god is much more anything else so challenges to yeah what it what we can do it unleashes where we are great okay so similarly like we said that we do um face challenges even in marriage so quickly to look at what are some of the challenges that we may face in marriage one is um like we did say you know people come into marriage sometimes with a lot of expectations right and if if you're the kind who's watched a lot of movies especially fairy tale movies you <laughs> you come in thinking that marriage is all a fairy tale right the the man will come in a shining armor or he'll come on a horse and take you away and you know these are all ideas and perceptions we build about marriage yeah but sometimes those expectations go unmet it it doesn't come the way that you have imagined it to be or you have groomed to understand so sometimes there are unmet expectations in marriage that becomes a challenge and and it could be very simple things like in your mind you expect to have a husband or a wife in a certain characteristic maybe you know that she'll get up early in the morning get you your bed coffee and you know keep your eye your clothes ironed right or the wives may think that whenever i'm in trouble he will come to save me and and fight you said okay yeah so so those are expectations that we may build up but sometimes that doesn't take place as as you would like it to okay other times um uh you, you know you may have come from home a home that has a lot of provision or a lot of wealth a lot of money <clears throat> uh, your your family is well to do but when you get married you get, you're coming into maybe a, a very middle class or a lower middle class and you don't have the luxuries or the the uh, things that you did have as a young as a single person and then there's a lot of struggle you know maybe you had you had helps and maids who would take care of everything you just have to come and sit on the table but after getting married there's a lot of work to do you know drawing water from the well or whatever it may be washing clothes or you know not having a mixer grinder but having the what is it called the the large stone right so so many things that uh, even your idea about how um, how marriage should be and and what it would be financially also sometimes can cause cause a struggle um sometimes there are challenges in health right someone one of the spouses falling sick um and then having challenges like that or meeting with some kind of a uh, uh, health issue and then having to take care of the other other person so even even through this um what what we do believe and what we what we what we do understand is we need to extend our faith in god knowing that he's the one who will restore us despite these kind of issues that may come about what else is there 
um, sometimes um, things may just may not be what it was supposed to be. Right after the wedding day, there's a lot of fights, there's conflicts, there is bickerings, there isn't an understanding. And, and so there are a lot of, uh, you don't get along with one another. And that in itself becomes, it's an everyday issue, right? Okay. Or there could be more serious things where there is violence. There may be um, physical abuse. There's violence, there can be uh, extramarital affairs, infidelity, unfaithfulness that, that can take place. Um, now, these are these some of these challenges are extremely painful, right? And hard to get by. Or there could be one of the partners probably not showing responsibility. There is uh, neglect in the way that they um, uh, that they uh, that, that they live life. Right? They probably they don't go for work, or they don't take a, a, up a responsibility of a of a of a husband or a wife, and that in itself brings a lot of difficulty. So there are many kind of challenges that can come our way, right? Even in marriage, uh, what do you do? Do we give up? You don't seem convinced. <laughs> It depends upon the person. Okay. Okay. Go hand in hand together. Okay. Yes. So Rin says you should go hand in hand together. Okay. So our, our understanding about how we deal with challenges come from the place of what hope we have. Right? So what we spoke about in John 16.33 is... You are an overcomer. So it's that's the hope that we have. Whether it be issues with marriage or anything else, the hope we have is we have God has helped us to overcome the world. And that's that's what he has said, right? Jesus has overcome the world and he did this so that we can also be overcomers, uh, whatever may come our way. So let's just read first John chapter five, verses one to four. Can someone take that? First John 5, 1 to 4. 1 and 4, sorry. Mike is there behind you. <clears throat> Every person who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah, is God begotten. If we love the one who conceives the child, we will surely love the child who was conceived. Every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Okay. So in what is it, what is this implying in verse four? That whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Right? In other versions, that's what it's written. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So as believers, when we are in Christ, that is what the promise is, that we overcome the world. So uh, everything that is um, that, that comes our way, everything that is thrown on us, we have the assurance that uh, we can overcome that because of what Jesus has done for us and because of how, um, how he shows us to be those those overcomers. Okay. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Could someone read that please? 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Okay. So what is that verse? Read God who always leads us in triumph always it isn't sometimes maybe at at distant times it says always leads us in tri triumph so then we 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 take god's word for that and believe god in every situation that he's the one who will bring us as overcomers through each of that so we we are aware that these challenges may not be easy and uh, um, uh, but yet we believe what God has declared 
about us, about our situation, and be overcomers. Okay. So even when things look difficult, if things look impossible, we continue to believe God for um, for what His Word says. Okay. Be good. All right. Now, even as we deal with um, uh, uh, difficult issues, one of the most important things. Um, you know, whether it be in marriage or whether it be things in life, is to not allow what has happened or the past really dictate what is going to happen to us in future. So, like for example, if any of you have met, have any of you met with accidents? Met with an accident? You've seen an accident? Okay, so some of you must have met with accidents. The next time that you go and sit on a bike or a car, what do you feel? What if something happens again? Right? Or it can be anything. Right? You've talked to a friend. And that time when you've talked to the friend, they've said something to you. So the next time that you go talk to them, you say, okay, what if they say that again? Right? And so it really affects the way that we deal with our future or deal with, with our, our present. Um, so we, in order to overcome this, what we need to do is, is not keep looking back. Some of those situations cannot be changed, right? Or something that's happened, like, for example, in a marriage, when there are, when there is unfaithfulness, right? When, when someone has broken the marriage covenant, you can't do anything much to reverse that situation. But you can choose to move past it, right? Rather than allowing uh, it to devastate your own life, you can move past it by looking at what God has for you in future. It's painful. I, I don't think we sometimes understand how painful some of these situations are, you know, especially when in counseling, when I do see people, I can just see the pain and the brokenness that they have, that they just feel that they cannot move forward, right? And the, that pain is very real, right? And how much, uh, and as believers or as people who walk with uh, walk with others who are going through these difficulties, we, are, we need to be understanding, we need to be gentle, we need to be encouraging, okay? But nevertheless, it is, it is a situation that can be painful, but encouraging them to look forward, to move past, not allowing what has happened to hold them back there, but move forward. What happens when you drive a car and if you keep looking at the rear view mirror? You'll crash. You can't look, keep looking at the rear view mirror, right? You need to keep looking forward. The rear view mirror looks, you look at it to get some perspective, but you keep looking forward. So similarly, it is important that we keep moving forward. Now, some of these challenges are temporary. Like, for example, if when there is a sickness that comes about or when there is a job loss, it's for a period of time. But to continue to believe that God will move us out from that, that place and that space. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so... What do we look for? Now, it, it's important for us to understand what do we do to overcome life's challenges. And I'd like to take you all to, through maybe four, four practical ways of how we can overcome life's challenges. Four practical ways. Uh, it's also something that, that, that how, we, how we look at our faith. Okay. So the first one is to guard your heart. What happens when a problem comes. Hmm? Yeah, you get all the feelings will all rise up. The emotions will all come up. So put yourself in a situation. Sorry? Blood will be boiling. Yeah. So think of a time if someone was unfaithful to you. What will happen? Angry, blood will boil. <laughs> Hands will come up to, yeah, the fire will all be there, right? So 
yes emotions rise emotions it's natural that these emotions come up it isn't an unnatural thing it is natural right but what does scripture tell us to do proverbs 4:23 it says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life or it says keep careful watch over your heart because that's where your life starts so yes those emotions are normal right if you didn't have those emotions something is wrong right it is it is normal to feel jealous to feel angry to feel sad to feel upset it's normal but what is it that we got to be careful to do that we don't allow it to take control or take root don't allow it to grow a tree and bear fruit what will happen a lot of bitterness will bring about more bitterness right so when we allow it to take root to allow it to seed inside that's when we are losing things right so not allowing either um uh, the the anger or the fear to take hold of us because once that happens what will what will it will it will grow into something more right when we keep strife in our heart it grows into further bitterness and goes into fur, further ang uh, anger so guarding our heart from those feelings next generally when some things happen to us that we we don't expect who do we get most angry with okay that's one then you get angry with god right why god why did you do this to me why have you forsaken me even the psalmist said um, even jesus said that the psalmist also also said that why have you forsaken me right you feel as if god has abandoned you and the more that you think about it the more deeper it, deeper it it grows right the more that you think about okay god doesn't want me he doesn't like me he he's angry with me these are again like i said the very normal emotions but nevertheless we've got to guard our hearts in feeling that way towards god and we come back and go back to his word to his promises so that we encourage ourselves this way so how do you guard your heart yeah so it's a normal reaction it is a normal reaction right but did jesus continue to dwell on that or he said your will be done right i i want only what you want right so how do we guard our hearts what's the best way to guard our hearts yes the word of god to dwell richly in us right uh knowing that especially you know <clears throat> something that uh, uh that happens when when people um go through um, uh, when marriage in marriages one of the spouse goes through unfaithfulness because of the other you know where it hits them most in their very core that they're not loved right or that they were not good enough and that's why this happened and so that begins to boil over and over so when you keep god's word in your heart what does god's word remind you about his love it's everlasting right i've loved you with an everlasting love i will never leave you nor forsake you it's his sacrifice that it's his love that he poured out on us that he sent jesus his son for our sacrifice so there you begin to see how god's love is there for you you know even when you feel the most unlovable it's the word of god that brings you back into that understanding right so it is to keeping god's word in your heart and ensuring that you keep reading his word next is to recognize be aware that there are those negative emotions and bring it to under the submission of the holy spirit asking the holy spirit to bring about that change to bring about that um uh, you know that the difference in the way that you see it it's 
what matters is when you when you recognize it you come to god and say god you know i can't handle this anymore right help me to love help me to forgive and that's the power of the holy spirit that uh, brings that that helps you okay so when uh, what are you doing when you're doing that is you you need to keep your eyes on solutions rather than on the problem okay and there's an example given here uh, of the hummingbird and the vulture you know what the hummingbird you know the hummingbird right yeah and what is the you know the vulture what does the vulture feed on dead it feeds on dead animals okay so the the um, the analogy that's given here is when birds migrate both these birds the hummingbird and the vulture they fly over regions of the desert where there is there isn't anything what do the hummingbird do uh, what does the hummingbird do it looks for fresh uh, flowers or plants it looks for fresh and it over, it flies over anything that is dead but where is the vultures it goes back for the dead things right and that's exactly what you know is a lesson for us that whenever things happen we don't go back and eat the dead things or think or relive the dead but look forward into that which is new okay so the first one is to be able to guard our hearts all right okay uh just quickly stop here any questions any questions okay i don't think there's been a question okay so what's step 2 okay step 2 is to overcome evil with good so what is the the natural um way a man deals with pain and hurt if someone were to hit you on your face what would you first thing do give back right that's a natural response he hit me once i'll give him twice he gave it he he gave me a blue mark i'll make sure i make it double and make it black right so the natural response is to to do evil for evil but what what are we taught as believers overcome evil with good okay romans 12 19 to 21 can someone read it romans 12 19 21 never take revenge my friends but instead let god's anger do it for the scripture says i will take revenge i i will pay back says the lord instead as the scripture says if your enemies are hungry hungry feed them if they are thirsty give them a drink for by doing this you will make them burn with shame do not let they will defeat you instead conquer they will be good okay thank you so it the the first verse romans verse 9 uh, 12 verse 19 says never take revenge but allow god to take care of it right so it's not in your own hands it's not for you to take it in your own hands but allow god to take over so even when you have been treated unfairly you're coming to a place you're choosing so it's a conscious choice a conscious choice is you're saying i am not going to retaliate i am not going to show revenge i'm not going to get justice for my injustice but i choose to overcome evil with good so what are you doing when you're doing that you are choosing to not pay back or you're choosing to 
forgive or you're choosing to do good to love even when you are hurt and when you're broken is that easy is that easy it it's it isn't very easy but whose help do you have do we have it's the power of the holy spirit that helps us to love the unlovables right uh, and so we do the best we can to uh, do that which is good to overcome evil with overcome evil with good okay the third one it is to keep exercising your faith so when when we look at um, what jesus did in his ministry um, think of the different scenarios like when the when he was on the boat and the storm came what did he tell his disciples huh. do not be afraid do not be afraid right oh you of little faith or to jairus what did he say to jairus he said don't be afraid only believe right so jesus always encouraged people to have faith however bleak the situation looked he said have faith do you do you not believe or even when lazarus was dead for four days what does he tell mary and martha yeah you would you will see the glory of god if only you believed right so that is that's something that jesus never said in any of those places he never said oh i'm so sorry i don't know what to do it's always that he kept encouraging others to exercise their faith right and so also when we are going through challenging situations to be able to exercise that faith because what do we know that god is the one who is sovereign god is the one who knows exactly why and what and how difficult the situation is so when we look to him with eyes of faith he we can be sure he will work out things in a way that is for our best and that which will give him glory right so um to being to be able to exercise our faith so what does that exercising faith really look like exercising faith means that we should have courage okay it it's uh, saying that you know it's like going to a battlefield and calling calling out that we are victors we have, we have victory even when everybody's dying over there we're saying we have the victory it is calling life even when there seems to be death it's calling abundance even when the, where there seems to be lack and it's calling success when there is failure and it's calling faith when there is fear okay that's what um that's what this means when when we keep exercising our faith okay so what does faith help you do when you have faith okay let me give you an example <clears throat> you have a test okay and uh, your friend says don't worry i have this sorted <laughs> it depends on which friend no francis <laughs> okay uh, if it is a person you really can rely on all right what would you do would you sleep yeah right you will rest or think of a time i think these are better examples when you were children you told your dad and mom you said you know mommy i have to take this tomorrow to school would you worry about it through the night you will go to sleep nicely right why because you are sure that your mother will do it for you so faith brings you to a place of rest right that's that's what that's how you know that you have faith that you're not continuously worrying and wondering how it's going to happen but you are in that place of confidence that assurance that god has taken care of it there's nothing that you have to do 
uh, further into it. It's a place where you can quietly rest and trust and feel sure and secure that he will bring it through. Right? So that's in our situation, whatever the situation is, is to be able to exercise that faith. Okay? And the last one is to be able to take small steps to move forward. So however we work through situations, I mean, every situation is different, right? We, it may vary how we progress through in different situations. But we may need to take small steps of faith to, to pass through the storm that we are in. For example, let's say it's raining and everyone, everything is flooding, right? You can't keep city standing over there and say, okay, you know, helicopter will come and take me. You have to move steps of faith. Maybe you'll have to move two steps forward, right? Or maybe you'll have to lift your hands up for someone to actually come and rescue you. There are those small little steps of faith that you need to do. So taking those small little positive steps in helping you. One of the things that you can do is to get help of people. Right? It can be a friend, it can be a mentor, it can be a pastor, it can be a counselor, you know, where people come alongside you to help you through those situations. Now, depending on the situation, let's say if you have a financial, big financial issue, go to a financial advisor, right? Or you're having health concerns, go to a doctor. It's okay to go to a doctor. Exercise your faith. It's okay to go to a doctor to take those steps to help you through that. Okay, so taking those smaller steps really, really, really helps. <clears throat> um, it, even, even when we are taking those steps, we do it with wisdom. We do it knowing that God has purposed greater things for us. Okay? All right? So what are the four practical steps that we looked at? Guard your heart. Overcome evil with good. Exercising your faith. Taking small positive steps. Okay? All right. So before we get into the next portion, um, maybe I'll just stop for a couple of questions. We have five minutes. Stop for a couple of questions. Yes, students in class or the online students can share any questions. Pastor, can you hear me? Online students? Pastor, can you hear? Online students, any, cl any questions? Oh, she's speaking. Jacqueline, can you speak? Yeah, uh, now can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, so um, my question is about overcoming evil with good. So God has uh, told us that we should always overcome evil with good and we should not repay and it's quite clear and we need God's strength for that but so when we read the verse it says you know like never take revenge so and then um, I will take revenge I will pay back says the Lord so even in the New Testament many verses are there right like say, vengeance is mine so uh, it does God I mean like really this has been a question for quite some and does God really take revenge on people because when he asks us not to take Will he really do that for people? <laughs> that, I mean, because I see some people who are really flourishing. Like, I mean, they do a lot of good. They do a lot of injustice. And I don't want to name specific people. But uh, just uh, just seeing that, you know, because everything is flourishing for them, then nothing uh, as such has gone bad. And they have everything they manage of their own. So, so my, my question is that I, I'm so sorry for asking. No, no, good question. Okay, so her question is, does God really take revenge? 
Okay, let me open because I have my class full of students. Okay, what do you all think? Does God really take revenge? Yes. Okay, so um, Prince says, not in the ways that we expect. God takes revenge, but not in the way that we expect. Any other thoughts? And you do things that depending on like how your, the motive of your heart is. Like, and you do things that affect your cause. Hmm. So Rin says, it also is dependent on your your motive, the intention you have in your heart. Uh, if you if you have given over to God, then God has place to take care of it. Uh, yeah, so that's what she said. Okay, anything else? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Francis is saying that uh, you know the progression of how things happen. Uh, we've got to be careful of it. That you know you probably would have done something, and then they are taking revenge, and then you say, "God, you take care." Okay. All right. God has to take, okay, so Anand is saying that if God has said he will retaliate or he will take revenge, then a God, our God is a God who doesn't lie and he will do it, he will do it. The question is, should we know how God takes revenge? <laughs> It'll be nice to know, right? <laughs> but is it necessary for us to know how God is taking revenge? No, it isn't. If we've left things in the hands of God, we trust that God would do justly and show mercy, right? I think the other thing also is that each one of us have to answer God one day, right? During judgment, each of us have to answer God for our actions and for our works. So that's probably that's the time that we may see it. Right? And may, we may not see anything before that. I don't know. But um, uh, that's the time we know that God is going to call each one out for their actions. So whenever you're cheated over something, I mean, that's what I keep telling myself. You know, whenever I, you're cheated, especially, it angers me when people cheat, you, cheat me of money. You know, knowingly cheat me and I didn't know. Right? That really upsets me. But then I keep telling myself, God will take care of that. You know, God will take care of it. Because I remember once we were getting some gas changed, and this guy came in and he's he he said it cost some three thousand rupees for a part. And we just paid him because we didn't really check. And after he left, I checked and it was some hundred and fifty rupees. I felt so cheated. But this is the thought, you know, God will take care. I mean, God will ask for every everything that's been taken from you. Jackin, I hope that answered your question. I have a lot of people answering with me. Yes, yes. Very much. OK, great. All right, let's just uh, close, stop for a break, and we'll come back after 10 minutes.